You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Falls. What's going on, NASCAR Diecast Collectors and Diecast Reviewers on YouTube? This is Richard Big Brian here, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, hosted by me, Brian LaFleur Jr. As always, guys, I'm bringing you all your bi-weekly NASCAR Diecast News without each and every week until the very end of the 2017 NASCAR Diecast season. And we got ourselves a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Of course, with the new releases of the 2017 Toyota Diecast, we have them here first. And we got ourselves a lot of cool cars to review, including those Toyotas like I mentioned. That's mostly what this video is going to be mostly about uh, throughout the first and, and last half of this episode. So any guys who are Toyota fans out there, I would highly recommend checking this episode when we get started. Um, Speaking of that, that's also going to be included with your newly released diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales, K State Diecast, and Lesher's Diecast, all supplied by Lionel Racing. And we also do got some really cool, interesting uh, race win pre orders to be talking about in the last couple weeks that you guys might have missed on the on the couple race weekends that we have had. And also, with every pre order list, we have to have a cancellation list, guys. We got four new cancellations to be talking about, and everything else here on the NASCAR Diecast News, including some more uh, Toyota Diecast, some uh, sneak previews or sneak peeks of some uh, like I said more 2017 Toyota diecast for the 164 scale that we'll be getting to very shortly I'll be talking about that as well but we're gonna get all to this latest information and more as the NASCAR diecast news starts right now but before we do that guys we're gonna take a look back at last week's episode of the NASCAR diecast news rounding off the NASCAR diecast news 179 for its best selling diecast and its worst selling diecast Alright everybody, welcome to the NASCAR Diecast News, I'm your host, Brian LaFleur Jr. And we're going to start things off with your newly released diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales, Casey Diecast, and Lester's Diecast. We will be going over the Toyota Diecast very soon guys, but I will be going in numerical order because I do want to get a little organized here so we're not, you know, just all over the place because I'm really excited about talking to these Toyota Diecasts because we finally got them in stock. But the first one up we're going to be talking about today driver of the number 17 car is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in his Fastenal Ford Fusion and um, this is the second Fastenal car that we got released for this year. Uh, if you guys have remember that the Fastenal 50th anniversary car was the first car that was released and there was a lot of confusion going on to this, um, to, to this car because a lot of people thought this car was cancelled and it was. I think this car was cancelled in the 124 scale so I believe that this is a 164 exclusive. Uh, same thing with the 50th anniversary car so uh, if you're a Fastenal fan uh, and you're, uh, I probably recommend getting the 164s because I don't think they are making the 124s of this year because, like I said, they are DMP. But um, it'd be pretty cool. I mean, it's basically the same car as last year. Uh, slight changes to it. Of course, uh, they got the new uh, updated spoiler on the back, and of course, um, you know, the new uh, 
the new uh, NASCAR logo and all that other uh, cool accessories and all that. Uh, well, not accessories, you know what I mean, though. Uh, all the nooks and crannies that makes that diecast looks nice. So pretty nice right there, but I probably would recommend a 50th anniversary car just a little bit more because it does have some variation to it. But still a decent looking car, even though hopefully they change up the paint scheme for next year if he decides to run it. Because that is one of uh, Briggs Downs Jr.'s main sponsor. Um, next one up, guys, we're definitely not going to start the Toyota diecast and... Ironically, we're going to start things off with the man who is so far sweeping at uh, Bristol right now. Uh, I'm uploading this video, actually I'm doing this video on Saturday, so depending or not if Kyle Busch is going to sweep the weekend. But however though, we do got the Kyle Busch Skittles car now in stock. Uh, the uh, traditional Skittles car that he has drove in for the past uh, good three to four years now. Uh, mostly known for, you know, winning back-to-back -back last year and 2015 at the Brickyard 4. 400, but he did not win it this year. Um, thankfully, I mean, thanks to Martin Truex Jr., another reason to like the guy. <laughs> Even though it was a big rivalry between them two now, but you know, I'm not gonna really talk about that that much. But uh, the Skittles car, uh, you know, it is, you know, the same car that, you know, has been uh, released since 2015 and 2014 and 2017 and 2016 as well. So uh, hopefully next year they make a change. I still like the car. Um, it's a different uh, variety that we got for Kyle Busch, but of course, it's on the new. 2017 mold so maybe a good reason to get this car even though it does have name banners on it but uh you know <laughs> Kyle Busch fans out there are going to look really impressed plus we also got the interstate batteries car um the 164 scale that's also in stock as well that was from last episode so uh Kyle Busch diecast is starting to roll in uh speaking of some more JGR cars we got another Toyota diecast and it is the guy who will unfortunately be leaving the 20 car at the end of this season Matt Kenseth and the number 20 to Walt Toyota Camry um, unfortunately, yeah, like I said, he will not be with Joe Gibbs Racing next year because Eric Jones will be taking over his ride, which is very unfortunate because of all the sponsors that uh, Kenseth has grown this year. I mean, he's got DeWalt and then Ty joined on board this year in Circle K and Peak, but I guess they are not going to be uh, around with them that much longer. It looks like they'll be carrying the progress over to Eric Jones, who is the, you know, the up coming star for Joe Gibbs Racing. I mean, of course, we got Suarez, but uh, Eric Jones looks like he's really going to be a great fit because he's already done a good job, especially um, last year winning the Rookie of the Year in the uh, 2016 um, Xfinity Series. So, but anyways, back to Matt Kenseth. This is a really cool looking car. I, uh, you know, I'm definitely getting a lot of, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> This car really looks like um, the days when Matt Kenza drove the 17 DeWalt car. I really am starting to see that paint scheme. I mean, uh, last year's paint scheme was okay. I mean, I, I didn't mind the American car that they were going for, but uh, 2015 I think was a little bit better. But this year has to be my favorite DeWalt scheme. And uh, I would probably recommend getting this car because, like I said, Matt Kenseth will be leaving Joe Gibbs Racing in this year. And it's also his main sponsor as well. Also, one thing to point out, that Circle K is also on this car as well. If you look at the B post, there's a, you know, a red, um, you see that red circle right there? That is a Circle K logo. So glad that Lionel decided to update because I know uh, this car was uh, in the renders uh, like early this year and they didn't announce the Circle K sponsorship until like, you know, spring, uh, late spring. So uh, just something nice to point out right there. Uh, next one up, we got um, some gray golden diecast guys. This is really exciting. So uh, to add more on the Toyota diecast, so we got two more to show you guys. Um, we got Gray Golding's Dr. Pepper Toyota Camry car, and man, does this car look amazing! I mean, uh, David Reagan's Dr. Pepper throwback car from last year was really nice, and then we had Alex Bowman's uh, Dr. Pepper car from uh, 2014. But this probably has to be my favorite. I like the addition of the black and the white, and you know, I'm also a big fan of Dr. Pepper as well, so maybe another reason I'll get this car. Plus, even better, it's on the EL mold, so it looks really nice. I'm glad that we finally got a Dr. Pepper car on the EL mold. Um, looks really, really cool. So, that, that's much of all I got to say right there, even though Ray Golden is no longer in the 23 car now because BK Racing let him go, which is unfortunate. You know, he was a, a young guy that, unfortunately, you know, just uh, couldn't uh, pay up on the sponsors or whatever happened right there. If you guys saw the news about Ray Golding, um, you know, Google it because <laughs> I only know brief information about it because he's a pretty underrated driver. Uh, but young kid, hopefully we can see him in a better ride next year or whenever. Uh, speaking of some more Greg Golden diecasts, we probably got another diecast that is on the PTC mold, but this probably has to be... It was going to be one of my favorite diecasts for this year, but it's probably now going to be my least favorite diecast for this year at all. Because this is the, the Grey Golden Sweet Frog car. Yes, it's released and it made MOQ, but take a closer look. Notice something different about this car? 
Well, it's on a different mold. It's on the PTC mold, as you can tell by the spoiler. It is really big. But also look at the casting on this mold. It doesn't look like the decals match up very well. Like, if you look at the front, it looks kind of weird. and doesn't look like it's placed. Well, let's just say Lionel just got, uh, they really wanted to push this car into shipping and get them air fried Or maybe BK Racing just wanted to get them, wanted to get it along with the Dr. Pepper car because it'd be a great addition. Um, let's just say they rushed the hell out of this car, guys, like similar to what happened with Matt Kenseth Johnson's throwback Tide car from last year, which completely ruined that car and came as one of my worst diecasts from last year on my top 10 worst diecast list because the color rims off. Um, the coloring is, you know, it's a, it's okay, but just I'm not happy with uh, it's on the PTC mold because you guys know the tires look too big, um, the spoiler's way too big, and also it's, it, it has, it, it, it's on a 2015 slash 2016 mold even though it has 2018 slash 2017 decals on it. So yeah, that's a big fail right there for Lionel. I'm really disappointed. Also, it does not have the name banners as well. I mean, it kind of looks like the name banners are blacked out, but there's no um, Gray Golding's last name on the back of the car. So another addition why I would pass up on this car, but it is the first edition we got the Sweet Frog cars. So maybe that's the only recommendation I would get this car, but um, I'm not a big fan of how this car came out. I really wish it took a lot more time to it. Um, it's pretty unfortunate because he drove this car at Richmond and his Dr. Weber car ran at Texas, but um, just some fun facts right there. I forgot to point out, but yeah, I'm very disappointed in the Sweet Frog car. Um, you can still get it. I, I would still recommend it, like I said, but just, yeah, I'm not happy with the quality results. Lionel really needs to stop this because it's, uh, it, oh, God, forbid me. If they do this to the Truex diecast, oh, I'm done with Lionel. <laughs> done. Um, anyways, that's just me going to rant. But, yeah, we got some more NASCAR diecasts to be showing you guys. We got uh, Landon Castle's number 34, Loves Travel Stop Sport Fusion. Uh, very similar car, um, you know, throughout the past few years that we've had, you know, um, various drivers took over this car, especially Chris Buescher. Uh, but yeah, Landy Castle now the new driver in 34. Glad to see him back in that car. Um, yeah, you know, it's a pretty plain, bland, um, wow, I can't talk today, a pretty bland looking car. Uh, I was trying to say bland and plain at the same time, but uh, I guess I just created a new word <laughs> on dictionary.com. Um, yeah, add that stuff. <laughs> but yeah, the 34 Loves car, I, uh, you know, like I said, it's pretty basic, but uh, it would be cool, you know, to add to your collection to, you know, to get a 34 car in this uh, collection, but uh, yeah, we still got some other cool cars to be showing you guys, like the CCX Plate Safe car and some others for Landing Castle. Uh, the Starkey Foundation car and all that. Um, we got two more diecasts to show you guys. This car, I think a lot of people have been very anticipated to see this car. And Lionel got it right, guys. We finally got a Kyle Larson diecast for this year. And no, it's not his target car. It, it, it is his presented by Credit One Bank car, guys. I, I almost did the NASCAR broadcast thing right there. The you know the presented by Credit One Bank one to go thing. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, you guys won't roast me in the comments about that. You probably will. But otherwise, guys, yeah, this car looks absolutely fantastic. I'm glad we got a Kyle Larson car for this year. Especially with this hot performance he is doing this year. Um, you know, him and Mark Truex Jr. have definitely been the two candidates I think will definitely uh, clinch the championship for this year if they keep it up at this rate. Especially with Larson's um, um, the third win at Michigan. I mean, man, this guy is just on a hot streak. Great championship contender, and I'm glad to see this guy finally getting some success at Chip Ganassi Racing. Um, but yeah, and the Credit One Bank car, I would recommend getting this car because Target will be leaving next uh, at the end of this season, and Credit One Bank will probably be his main sponsor. I mean, kind of makes sense. Um, but man, what a nice looking car. I'm so glad this is on the EL mold. Uh, I mean, if you're a Larson fan, they're, they're, I cannot stress this enough. This car, you should get it as well. It's also available on the 124 scale as well. So uh, shout out to all my Larson fans out there. You know who you are. Also are some of my good friends as well. They are probably going to get this diecast as well. And to wrap up all the 164s, guys, we got uh, the guy who is making his final start at Bristol Motor Speedway. It is Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his goodies mixed fruit blend car. This is ironic the car that he's driving at Bristol so what a cool way to you know release this car out uh, during Bristol um, also, the 124 scale is also available as well, even though it's on the Gold Series mold, which the hood only opens. But uh, still a nice looking car. I mean, if I had to recommend which car I would get, I know Racing 211 pointed this out in his, in, in his review. I would recommend the Degree car because we never had that yet. But if you're a Dale Jr. fan, I recommend getting this because, like I said, it has the updated mold with the spoiler and, you know, all the updated contingencies on that. So, um... 
you know, very similar to last year's. I mean, I, there are some slight changes to it, but um, it is Dale Jr. cars, so I'm sure you guys are going to buy it because, you know, Dale Jr. diecast do sell, so got to give Lionel's props for that. Um, we do got some 124s to be talking about as well, guys. We got four 124s to be talking about. So most of them are exclusive diecast, and one's actually a throwback as well, but we're going to get on to some truck diecasts. Let's just say we had some new truck diecasts that came in with the uh, goodies shipment as well. Um, and we're going to start things off with your uh, defending champion in the Camp World Truck Series, Johnny Sonner and his number 21 Elijah uh, Truck Champion card that, he, of course, he won at Homestead with the championship. I mean, I got mixed feelings about this championship car. I mean, of course, for one, the uh, spoil, uh, I mean, with the, uh, the big old huge championship logo right on top, I mean... <laughs> Once again, guys, I mean, I, I, I love how Lionel, you know, just keeps doing this. I mean, they got to go back to their roots. I mean, actually, they never had their roots. No, I stand corrected. But, man, <laughs> they, they really need to put that championship logo on the rear deck lid. I mean, especially since there's so much space on the truck diecast where you can put that on there. I know some people are like, oh, you can't cover the sponsors. Well, I've seen other diecast companies do that. Uh, take a look at, you know, uh, Austin Dillon's Eldora win from a couple years ago. Uh, they, they put the Mud Summer Classic logo on there, even though it was inaccurate, but they did it. I don't know why they can't do that with Championship logo, because, man, just the car just looks, the truck uh, looks so just out of place without that 21 on top. Don't know why Lionel does that. I think they have a really good fetish on putting Championship logos on diecast. That's what it seems like. I mean, just ask the Daniel Suarez and Jimmy Johnson diecast in the beginning. Also, NASCAR Authentics waves. But anyways, enough of my rant. Uh, I do love the mold, though. Don't get me wrong. Um... However, though, the hood doesn't open. <laughs> that's my problem. And that's also leading into the other die cast that we got. Um, Austin Cindric's number 19 draw tight truck car. Um, yeah, I know my friend Race Day 2011 is definitely going to pick this up because Austin Cindric uh, is, you know, going to probably be in a Penske car for next year because if you guys have heard about uh, Brad Kozlowski Racing, we'll be shutting down at the end of this season, which is very unfortunate. You know, I don't really feel too too sorry for uh, Chase Briscoe because he's been crashing a lot. <laughs> no offense. I know he's a rookie, but man, every time I see that 29 truck, it's just like, he's going to wreck someone and he's going to wreck himself. But Austin Cindric, I think is the better guy of the bunch and we'll probably see him in the 22 car for next year for the Xfinity series since he will be out of a ride um, next season in the truck series which is very unfortunate I mean don't want him to rush up pretty quickly but um, he actually will be making his first Xfinity start uh, very soon guys I can't remember what the race was but um, yeah he will be um, you know making his first Xfinity start as well so really cool seeing that young man you know getting some um, um, getting some attention right there of course uh, Team Penske is going to love that especially um, the, the, the next guy who I mean we got Roger Penske who's in, who's in charge and then Team Cindric which uh, he's mostly associated with the Team Penske program in the uh, Verizon IndyCar series but uh, that's why the name sounds familiar if you guys are known that is his son after all so not surprised that we're going to be seeing him in a car next year but yeah the truck I mean one thing I got to say about the good about this, Lionel really nailed the truck diecast. I mean, the mold looks really nice and it looks very accurate, so I'll give them props for that. I just wish, you know, I don't think it's worth $45 for a, a car that does not have the hood opening or, you know, the, uh, the roof flaps don't even open as well. I know the deck can't open because it's a truck diecast, but at least give us the hood opening. So, you know, I'm glad Lionel, I mean, like I said, the decal and the casting of the mold looks fantastic they really did a good job and i think it was worth the wait but i think i wouldn't mind waiting a little bit more if we got a car that a, a truck sorry i keep saying car but this is why i don't review that much trucks um i just wish this truck die cast um hopefully in the next few truck die cast we'll get the hood openings like you know the uh, chase Elliott uh, truck and the uh kaz Grala and ben rhodes and um Matt Craft and Eldora win and Kyle Larson and Eldora win. So still a lot of cool cars to be talking about. Ben Kennedy as well. So we got a lot of truck diecasts coming in very shortly, guys. But that's mostly all I got to say right there about the truck diecast. Um, we also do got uh, another 124 exclusive diecast. And it is another Elliott Sandler car. His Armor 100, 150th anniversary car. It's an autograph as well. So that's another Junior Motorsports car that you will probably recommend getting. I would recommend getting if you are into autographs and Big Man Junior Motors, Motorsports as well. That car's going to look really great with the One Main Financial and the Hunt Brothers and the uh, Dale's Pale Ales. So that's the fourth Elliott Sandler car we got released for the 124 scale. So very nice right there. And I'm happy to announce, guys, throwback season is finally upon us. And we finally got our first 2017 Dodge Throwback Diecast in stock. And it is Brad Kozlowski's number two Miller Genuine Draft Throwback. 
And like I said, yep, it's the first one we got for 124. It's probably going to be the first one with 64 as well. Not really going to go into any details on this car, but it is very similar to the car that he drove in 2015, um, which was, you know, a 25th year anniversary car. But this car will look nice because it's got the updated Ford um, Fusion grill, which, of course, you know, in 2015 they had the old one uh, before they went to the new model in 2016. So that's probably the only difference, and plus some, you know, some side sponsors and, you know, the Monster Energy branding and all that. But still a really nice looking car, and uh, I do like the boxes for this year. They do uh, definitely have a nice, simple design to it, and I do like the uh, throwback uh, vibes that we got as well for this diecast. But that wraps up all, all your diecast releases, folks. All right, everybody, and we're going to go on to our pre-orders, guys, and we're going to be mostly just talking about the um, race winners that we've had throughout the past few weeks uh, involving in the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series. Um, so we're going to be starting things off with uh, what happened at Iowa a few weeks back, and it's going to be talking about, let's just say we got another first-time winner. Um, in the, in the NASCAR series, um, especially for the Xfinity series, we got Ryan Priest's uh, Mohawk uh, Toyota Camry diecast that he won at Iowa. That is now offered in the 124 scale, so really nice right there. Uh, that was a cool race to watch because it had no uh, cup drivers involved in it, so I know a lot of fans were looking forward to that. Um, definitely could look really nice, and uh, Ryan Priest is definitely. Uh, um, you know, he, he's really, you know, he is a developing driver for um, Joe Gibbs Racing and, uh, you know, he has had some other rides before, but I'm glad to see he's starting to get some attention now and, uh, you know, he would be a great candidate to drive the 20 or the 18 uh, probably for the remainder of the season, especially when we get into the, um, the playoffs for the Xfinity Series because I know the uh, cup drivers can't run during those times. So uh, it's going to be really cool to see how well he's going to do, but glad to see he got his first win. Uh, very nice right there and uh, it's only going to be offered in the 124 scale like I said. Um, and now we're getting on to uh, the cup races, guys, and we're going to start things off with what happened at Watkins Glen. Of course, the track that is uh, my favorite because it's also the closest where I've been since I am a resident in New York. So, uh, unfortunately, I did not go to the race, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, but, uh, well, miscellaneous reasons. But, yeah, let's just say uh, with my luck, Mark Trex Jr., which is my, now my favorite uh, Monster Energy driver, um, in the Cup Series. He uh, won by fuel mileage, so really cool that he picked up his fourth win this season and his second in the Furniture Row car. Um, so really nice right there. Always good to see that uh, Black 78 doing well. And he's really, um, by the time I upload this video, he probably has already clinched his regular season championship. Um, because this will be uploaded on Sunday, so I'm sure he had a great run at Bristol, and we'll see how that goes right there. But uh, very nice looking, and uh, you know, I mean, I know it's not going to be as you know raced as uh, <laughs> as his um, other previous race wins that we got for this year, like his Las Vegas and his Kansas and Kentucky win. But um, I don't know. I got mixed feelings that this car might not make MOQ because most of the Glenn diecast that we've got throughout the previous years have mostly been won by Toyota drivers and most of them have been canceled. Let me take a look at Dimity Hamlin's car from last year. So, uh, But it is offered and I do have it on pre-order. Pre -order. Um, you can pre-order it on Plan B Sales, KC Diecast, Lino Racing, or any of your local diecast dealers. Um, and we also got to be talking about, let's just say, man, Kyle Larson for the third time, <laughs> I mean, second time this year and the third in a row, he's got three wins now in Michigan of Kyle Larson. So we have the Kyle Larson Michigan win, race win car. That's now, um, yeah, let's say he swept both Michigan races, guys, for this year. Won the one in spring and then won the one here in summer, guys. So really awesome right there. I mean, it was only a matter of time we were going to see the king of the Irish Hills, you know, get that third win, and he did it, guys. Um, so, yeah, like I said, third career win at Michigan. I think this is definitely has to be Kyle Larson's uh, favorite track. Uh, you know, he's been really fast here and is a fast track. I mean, don't get me wrong. But, yeah, that target car was pretty fast, and that was a pretty uh, awesome uh move that he made on the restart coming with the um the two to go so <laughs> very cool even though a little upset because mark Trex jr did not win but um you know it is what it is um sorry for that noise uh my microphone wires keep getting in my way when i'm talking i talk with my hands so that's why you keep hearing that noise hopefully get cut out when i'm editing it if not then uh you know rough edit <laughs> but um really nice looking pre-orders we got right there highly encourage guys you could pre-order them otherwise they were getting to the cancellations list which is good for you to talk about next and we got four new canceled diecasts to be talking about and uh i am going to go um kind of out of the order because i do want to make a nice pa announcement for one of these cars remember the monster energy inaugural card that they were um you know why i was playing to make 
Um, well, let's just say that was a waste of time and a waste of space because it was canceled. Yeah, <laughs> I just had to point that out. Yeah, what a waste of time and space for this car. I mean, I understand Monster Energy is a big sponsor now in uh, NASCAR, and I know they're probably making a crap load of money with all the advertising and all the merchandise they have with apparel, and they were trying to do diecast as well, but it, it's just simply not going to work, you know, especially with, you know, Monster Energy, a very big controversial sponsor when it comes to NASCAR diecast because, you know, <laughs> energy drinks are not very remarkable to kids, even though, even on the 124s as well, for adult collectibles, collectibles like us, um, they have to put bases on them, so, and plus it is kind of redundant to have this car, I mean, this kind of reminds me of with the Smith Sprint Cup diecast that we got from 2013 that uh, made MOQ in both scales, but uh, failed to do it in the last previous years for, you know, <laughs> very, very obvious reasons, because there's not really much of a high demand in this diecast, so... Yeah, that's not really a big loss right there, but these other three I'm about to show you are going to be quite a bit lost, especially for any elite collectors out there, because uh, Kevin Harvick's number four, Bush, now an alcoholic card, that's what the NA stands for, if you guys are wondering. Um, that's been canceled in the 124 Elite version. Um, I still have no idea when he's going to be driving this car. Um, I know he's driving the orange Bush car, um, which was also, you know, released with this car, um, with the pre-orders that we had a couple of weeks back. Um, that he's driving to Bristol, but this car, I'm not quite sure, if I had to guess, it has to be probably during one of the playoff races, if I had to guess. If not, or maybe right before, um, you know, <laughs> so it's probably going to happen on one of those two, um, events. But, um, yeah, like I said, not really a big loss, the 124 ARC standard version and the 164 version is still available pre-order. Uh, very similar to Kyle Busch's number 18 M&M's Caramel, or Caramel, however you pronounce it. Um, the Pocono Race Win car, uh, yeah, he, uh, this car has been canceled in the 124 Elite version as well. So the 124 and 164 version are still available for pre-order, and yes, there is a 164 version, guys. So, uh, gotta make sure you hit those pre-orders, guys, uh, cause you know, um, cause otherwise we're gonna head into this next one, which, uh, this is quite an interesting one, but was I surprised seeing this car getting canceled? Uh, kinda, but there was a lot of outrage on this diecast getting canceled, and it is the 2017 Ty Majeski's number 60 iRacing.com car. And this has been unfortunately canceled only in the 164 scale, which I know a lot of people are severely disappointed at. I mean, yeah, what more can I say about this car? I mean, uh, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, it is a big loss. Don't get me wrong. Ty Majeski is a developing driver for uh, Ralph Stremity Racing, and um, it's cool seeing the 60 car back on track. I mean, it's been uh, you know quite some time since we've seen that car back. Um, so yeah, I can't quite remember when he drove this car, but I'm sure it's probably during one of the races where cup guys weren't evading it. Uh, sorry, you know, for anybody who is rooting for cup guys in Xfinity Series, that's kind of sad. But they do bring in sponsors, so that's why they got them right there. But anyways, back to my topic, yeah, the Ty Majeski car. Uh, a lot of people were highly anticipating getting this car diecast, but unfortunately it's canceled in the regular release. However, though, there's something I really got to point this out, and this is something usually that um, doesn't really quite happen on the Ask for Diecast News. I mean, usually we have diecasts that get canceled, but sometimes they get reappeared, and then Lionel makes a quick edit, and then suddenly they're released. Uh, you know, I mean, that's what happened with the Austin Dillon uh, Ream car and the Bubba Wallace uh, Don Throwback car from last year. Um, but let's just say Lionel Racing posted and confirmed on their Instagram account toward uh, one comment, which were probably all the hate comments regarding about the cancellation, that the Ty Majeski car will make it a, a sudden appearance in one of the next few weeks for NASCAR Authentics. Um, and this is very similar to how they handled the Cole Custer Haas car and the uh, Hunt Brothers um, Kevin Harvick car that was released in a couple waves ago. Um, you know, wave four and wave um, <clears throat> seven. So, yeah, that's really cool right there. I'm kind of excited. You know, so part of me wants to trust Lionel. I mean, they have done this before with most Xfinity diecasts. I mean, I can't blame them because Xfinity diecasts really have been selling that well. I mean, besides, you know, Dale Jr. I mean, mostly Junior Motorsports diecasts have only been released so far, which is, you know, pretty sad considering all the other diecasts that we've had this year have been canceled. Um, even some Junior Motorsports cars have been canceled as well. But, anyways, back to what I'm saying. Yeah, um, I'm really excited for this. I don't know if they're going to announce it for, um, you know, like I said, for Wave 7 or Wave 8. Um, and correction right there, uh, Cole Custer car was actually released in Wave 6. Got a little far ahead of myself. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
But, um, yeah, before the comments start going crazy and all that, be like, you said the wrong thing, but, you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's quite exciting. I'm looking forward to that. If it's true, then it's true. But uh, Lionel did post it on their Instagram, so maybe it's true. But we'll definitely keep an eye on this car, and I'll give you guys some updates on this car whenever it gets released for the um, next reveal of NASCAR Authentics Wave 7 or Wave 8, Wave 9. Who knows when it's going to happen, but um, looks like there is some, uh, you know, some shine after all for Lionel Racing. But that wraps up on the cancellations, folks. All right, everybody, and we're getting on to our last topic of this today's video, and it is going to be, like I promised, uh, some sneak peek preview pictures of some more 2017 Toyota diecasts that will be heading into the retails very soon. But so far, uh, I got these pictures from um, you know various users on Instagram and YouTubers as well, uh, and all this information was provided by Lionel Racing and Plan B Sales and all the other. Um, and all the diecast collectors from uh, Instagram and YouTube as well. But yeah, but we're gonna be talking about these diecasts and there's two of them I gotta show you that have not been released yet. Um, and I'll tell you how you can get these. But we got Kyle Busch's 26, 2017 actually. Wow, that almost went, it felt like a fail right there. Uh-oh, <laughs> I'll let the comments start raging right now. But we got the 2017 Kyle Busch M&M's Toyota Camry diecast, which uh, looks really nice. I'm glad we got the nice, bright and colorful uh, number in uh, yellow 18 M&M's back in track, especially in the new 2018 mold that you see right there. Um, you know, not really a good uh, view. Yeah, nice, good, you know, sort of an angle of the uh, Toyota grill, but I'm sure it's going to look very nice when we get the pictures from Plain B Sales. But the spoiler looks right. Everything looks pretty dang awesome. It's also on the EL mold as well, so that's a die cast we don't have to worry about. But I uh, got to give the picture credit to uh, R3 Stud Tud Tut. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's a, uh, you know, well, you can clearly see. I, I, I put the pack, I put the captions in this uh, picture for you. Um, you know who you are. I also posted this. Uh, uh, picture on Instagram and Facebook as well um, for any guys want to check that out anymore uh, feel free to give a follow and like on our Facebook and Instagram pages the diecast news official and the diecast news um, had to change it because NASCAR won't allow the name anymore or oh, they'll shut my page down but uh, anyways back to this car it looks really nice and I'm glad we're gonna see this diecast and another car I gotta show you guys this one I actually got from a youtuber and it is from a uh, race car boy 93 on YouTube so uh, make sure to check out his review you on this car looks really cool but it is the Kyle Busch 2017 Snickers CRISPR car now I'm not a big fan of the paint scheme but um, the Toyota diecast looks very nice on there I mean this is the best angle I got for you guys I um, mean clearly see the top view on this car and also the spoiler and kind of the same angle like we did with the Kyle Busch M&M's car but like I said once we get the full pictures from Plan B Cells uh, I'll give you guys more reviews on this but this is actually a sneak peek guys but uh, glad that one thing I really was concerned about especially seeing the gray golden uh, sweet frog car was that what cars were going to have the PTC mold and what cars were going to have the EL mold but clearly these other two Kyle Busch die casts are on the, on the EL mold so that's really really nice right there and hopefully you know with all the other uh, Toyota diecasts that are coming out very soon like Daniel Suarez, Martrex Jr., Eric Jones, I mean just uh, just to name a few more Toyota drivers out there that we're looking forward to get some more diecasts and also some second ultimate schemes as well like Matt Kenseth's Tide car and uh, his Pete car so um, we also got uh, another Toyota diecast as well to show you guys and it's also uh, Danny Hamlin's uh, FedEx uh, Toyota Camry Express car as well I almost kind of forgot about that but um, the 124 scale is actually available but the 164 might be available in the next episode from what I know but this is provided by the same guy on Instagram uh, R3 stud Tud Tud or Tut whatever his name is um, but yeah you know I got mixed feelings about the FedEx car I mean of course they uh, you know are not going back to you know it, it's basically gonna be the same car um, for all four of the cars just you know once gets say express office and you know I, I, I really wish they would have done that but um, this would be a cool car to get it's also on the EL mold as well so very nice right there but now I'm gonna tell you guys how I can get these well I for what I know and for what the information that everybody has provided me uh, thanks to everybody on Instagram by the way um, these are only available at the Lionel Racing Retail Store in North Carolina. So if you guys are residents of North Carolina, you guys can pick these diecasts up right away. Um, man, that'd be a dream come true for me to live in North Carolina so I can get exclusive deals um, and previews of uh, you know <laughs> new NASCAR diecasts that haven't been released yet. You can also get these at the Fanatics trailers as well. Um, depending if you like the trailers or the tents, they will be there. I'm um, sure many people at Bristol probably collected these and we're already seeing reviews on YouTube. Um, and you can also get these online at the 
Joe Gibbs Racing Store as well. I know they're air fighting them. Uh, this is coming from my friend Race Day 2011. Uh, he did confirm this, and AJ Sell, uh, one of our diecast news experts as well, that runs our Facebook page. Um, they have confirmed this, and uh, Lionel has as well. So um, if you are a big fan of Joe Gibbs Racing, it's a great time to get his diecast. I mean, you will be paying a little bit more for shipping, but it might be worth it because some of these diecasts look cool. And plus, I think they're also making a multi-pack car of uh, the Joe Gibbs Racing cars, and that is probably where we're going to see the Suarez car getting released. Um, I know a lot of people are wondering when that car is going to be released because all the Joe Gibbs Racing cars have been released. Um, but we'll probably be seeing that car very shortly, his Eras car, and then the Stanley and Subway car. And then maybe we'll see some Truex diecasts coming as well because it would be a great time to get some Truex diecasts. And I'll be providing you guys reviews on those very shortly. But these will be available, like I said, at your local diecast dealers very, very soon. Probably in the next episode when they get released or so, which I'll get more fuller details and information. As this is just rough information and rough speculation right now. But other than that, guys, this has been an episode of the NASCAR Diecast News. I hope you guys enjoyed this video series. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, please give this video a good comment like. If you guys have not already, I highly encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel channel for any more of the latest NASCAR Diecast news that is out there or anything that's NASCAR Diecast that is out there in the market. But until then, guys, this is a Rich Big Rice signing off. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we're going to see you guys in the next NASCAR Diecast news video.